Chapter 10. Master Tang's wife, Mei Zai, ran her gnarled finger over the character in the center of the bowl. Was this your clever idea? Sing Sing didn't speak, for to answer would be immodest. Her cheeks went hot. Besides, she didn't want to start a conversation. She had to hurry to Wei Ping Sing. I recognize your calligraphy, of course, Mei Zai looked thoughtfully at the bowl. It is indeed a marvelous bowl. She set it down on the fine bamboo table, but I have little use for it myself. Sing Sing pressed her lips together and looked down. It would make the perfect gift for my daughter-in-law, however, added Mei Zai after a pause. Sing Sing looked up with gratitude into the smiling eyes of Mei Zai. Let's see how much I can afford it. Mei Zai went through an inner door, leaving Sing Sing alone in the central room. The abundance of superb things rosewood furniture and elaborately carved jade statuettes and lacquerware and reds and blacks and an engraved walrus tusk made her stand very straight and tall, her arms pinned to her sides. She knew that breathing alone never broke things, but still she breathed shallowly. She would move as little as possible except for her eyes. In the cave, they had good quality furniture too. Their stepmother had sold anything not absolutely necessary. But even when father was alive, their belongings had been in nowhere near the abundance found in Master Tang's house. Father liked simplicity, a taste Sing Sing had inherited, and Master Tang was wealthy, something the Wu family was not. Her eyes moved past the more showy items and slowly took in the line of blue and white porcelain bottles on the shelf beyond the table. They were decorated with lines that made pleasing patterns on the rounded sides and at the neck. The fronts were flat, however, and though she couldn't see the back, she guessed they were as well. On the fronts were ovals with words written from top to bottom. She read, asparagus, for the treatment of painful illnesses in the joints and lower back. The next jar said, sesame, and the next, poppies. Some of the bottles were merely said what, was, what the cure was without the ingredient, iron, and the intestinal calming herb. Elixir of eight precious ingredients, but for rescue from danger. One bottle had no words, but an erotic scene instead, and Zing Sing knew it was one of the aphrodisiacs that she'd overheard women gossip about as they stood in little gaggles around the cart of the occasional of the occasional visiting doctor. Stepmother never talked to them, but father had told her that the erotic scenes were nothing to be ashamed about. Rather, they were talismans for good luck, and this was a moment when Sing Sing's family needed all the luck they could get. She stared for several minutes. On the shelf against the adjoining wall were more bottles, their flat fronts in the shape of octagons, sitting on stands and with little necks that held paper and cork stoppers. These had the yin-yang symbol in the center with a series of three lines going out to the sides at intervals, like spokes. There were so many bottles that that, and they were lined up so precisely straight that Sing Sing had that same sensation she felt when looking at the endless horizon of the sea in so many of Master Tang's painting, paintings, that sensation of being as tiny as a dust mote. All the bottles on both shelves had a funny little character at the top that Sing Sing had never seen before. We bought them when a state pharmacy in the big city closed, said Mei Zai. She had come back without Sing Sing noticing. The girl had been so absorbed in studying the bottles. Do you have anything for pain in the feet? asked Sing Sing. Mei Zai laughed. Oh, they're not full. We know nothing about the practice of medicine, dear girl. Master Tang and I enjoy them as objects of beauty. Here, come take a look at these. She led Sing Sing to a small table in a corner that held a low, wide bowl. Sing Sing immediately recognized the bowl as one her father had made. It was a pile of something she was familiar with, pottery shards. Their jagged edges brought back the image of Wei Ping's bone hens she had to her. Mei Zai held up a shard with a frog pattern on it. This is old. I don't know how old, but hundreds and hundreds of years. Perhaps even thousands. It was found way down south in the Dong Ting Lake area of the Yangtze River. The artistry is crude, but it may have been sacred to the people who used it. The frog had a round back with two stripes down the center and dots on either side in perfect reflection. 
Despite the urgency of the moment, Sing Sing couldn't help but feel delight. She imagined the frog hopping at the muddy edge of the river. It's lovely, she said. Lizai opened her hand. It was full of small coins of cast copper. She looked Sing Sing over. Then she reached into the folds of her bodice and took out a cloth purse. Help me open this, please, but my fingers cannot work the clasp anymore. Sing Sing opened the purse and Lizai poured the coins into it. Sing Sing was embarrassed that in stepmother's and her haste, she'd forgotten to bring a purse. I will return the purse quickly, she said. I have others. You can keep it, and you'll need something to fill it after you've given your stepmother this money. Nay's eyes, eyes discreetly went toward the bowl of pottery pieces, then back to Sing Sing's face. Pick the one that pleases you best. Sing Sing shook her head. I couldn't. Something so old and fine? Never. But that's exactly... Why you should have one, said Nezai, and her face spoke plainly her sincerity. Many people consider this junk, but you value it properly. Choose one. Sing Sing didn't dare put her hand in the bowl. She let her eyes do the searching, and there it was, a small part from the fluted mouth of what had clearly once been a large jar. It must have been a water jar, for this one piece had two animal images, a frog like the one on the shared on the shard Nezai had shown her, and a beautiful carp.